There is a man that I fear all the time. He will beat you if you have commit crimes. Four times the budget just the sequel has expanded. So buckle up my friend, because Rama's fucking landed. Eco, he will break your spleen. Eco, he will beat you red and green. Raid 2 was awesome on the screen. Eco is only five foot six. Eco, he will beat you up with sticks. Raid 2, that is your action fix. An infiltration of a crime family. Mad dogs returning, this is not Amelie. There will be car chase riots and an execution. And the greatest movie fight for a hopeful retribution. Eco, watch out for Hammer Girl. Eco, the baseball guy's about to hurl. Ritu will make you twist and twirl. Eco, why don't you use a gun? Eco, then you wouldn't have to run. But Ray 2 is so fucking fun. follow up a movie like The Raid? Gareth Edwards thought he had the answer to it. Increase the runtime, make this an almost godfather-like movie and take away the entire being trapped in a building scenario. The first movie is pretty bold, the second one is even bolder and the third one is what the hell are you doing? But he knocked it out of the park. Bloody hell did he knock it out of the park. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is the best action movie that has been made for 17 years at the time when I saw it. For 17 years, nothing has come even remotely close to how awesome this movie is. There are a multitude of reasons for it, but the first case is this guy. So the story for this one is as follows. In the aftermath of um, the events of the first movie, which I think by the way is a very 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 good movie but not quite as good as this one, Rama gets a new task. Because in the first movie Rama and his uh, squadron uh, came very close to expose corrupt politicians and police officers. And his task is basically now to become an, an infiltrator of a crime family. That sounds like a very good song, by the way. Uh, and via, via them expose the hierarchies of the corrupt police officers uh, in Indonesia. And um, so that's our thing. The only son of the patriarch is currently serving jail time. So uh, Rama gets put in with him to try to buddy up to him and make sure that uh, he can get in. He gets in and uh, now we have an infiltration story and uh, then we will have a lot of um, murdering basically. The, the style from the original raid is still in this movie despite that the tempo is sometimes being slowed down for more you know power struggles and character building and stuff like that and uh, that doesn't bother me at all. Sure, this movie has a lot of cliches to it, you know, the son who is a loose cannon who wants to take over the business, but the father, you know, the strong leader doesn't want him to get too involved because he doesn't know if he can trust him, blah, 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 blah. We've all seen that one before, but it is done very well. And frankly, I don't care because holy shit, this movie is fucking great. The fight sequences are simply the best I've seen in any movie for a number of years. And uh, they are just a hard hitting and bone crunching and eye gouging and all of these things. And it is great, awesome. And all the action sequences are fantastic. They, are, they just invent so many shrewd moves to, on a relatively low budget, make this movie look, look like a billion dollars. It is the car chases, the, the fight sequences in the subway. And... Um, the finale, holy crap, the finale. We 
got to talk a little bit about that. It is mind-blowing. And the fact is also that you have so many memorable characters in this one that if they just would have had all these vanilla characters that were interchangeable and you wouldn't know who's who, then you wouldn't have been bothered at all by it. But now you have a, you have a ton of interesting characters. You're not quite sure where they're going to end up. And when they introduce our super assassin and hammer girl and the baseball guy, dude, this movie goes to town major big time. Fair warning though, this movie is brutal. This movie is seriously god-awful violence and Jesus Christ, Hollywood doesn't do this stuff anymore. And even when they did, they didn't do it on this level. This movie means business, lots of business. I, I'm very glad that they didn't go into the you know, infiltration story 101, like, you know, your Donnie Brasco or your Point Break or what have you. But this one works a little bit different. And um, I'm very happy they did that. When the movie had about half an hour left, I thought to myself, well, this is a really, really good movie, but it can't quite yet match up the awesomeness of the first one. Well, said the movie, then what about this? And then it kicks into action overload and holy shit! If I wasn't excited before, then it goes to absolute oh my god territory. It ends, regrettably however, in my opinion, on a bit of a almost uh, sequel baiting kind of a thing that knocks it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. But um, since we're going to talk a little bit about, about that in the extended review, but uh, we're probably never going to see a uh, conclusion to the to Rama story. And uh, I'm okay with that now, but I was a bit annoyed by it when I first saw it. And, and of course, everybody's favorite mad dog, Yayan Ruhian, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how it's pronunciated. He's back, but he's playing a different character since he was, well, you know, murdered in the last one. But uh, he has a very interesting story, actually. And uh, he's sort of this, this drifter, almost, that is, you know, handled as, an, as a hitman and uh, enforcer by uh, the crime family. And uh, his story is kind of interesting. He could have almost had a movie all to himself. The story of him gets a little bit, you know, cut away because he gets murdered, properly super murdered. And uh, because we're introducing a new guy, a tank with human legs and very, very sharp knives who, are, who is, you know, intensity incarnated. And, uh, well, what happens when he and Rama finally stands toes to toes and the nose to nose? What we get is the best fight in a movie that I've ever seen in my entire life. We'll go through that a little bit in the extended version also. But if you haven't guessed this already, I love this movie. I love almost every second of this movie. Despite the very, very bloated runtime, it still functions. It's still great. It's such a big story, such a grand story that they're, they're telling. And every character gets to shine. And this is one of the best action movies I've seen in my entire life. If you have never seen this movie before, what are you waiting for? If you've seen The Raid and want to see you know, more, why haven't you seen this movie already? It is even better. If you have problems with very brutal action movies, this one may irk you a little bit because it is very, very brutal. Uh, and it doesn't hold back at all. But uh, if you can stomach it, you will love it. 150 minutes of pure delight. Some of the greatest movie fights I've ever seen in my entire life, plus the best one ever, you heard me. Amounts to a whopping 99 points. Not the strongest 99 I've ever given out, but, the, but it's 99 points nevertheless. This remains one of the decade's best movies. And uh, it is a, an action milestone which it will take years and decades for anybody to try to top, if anybody ever does it. Holy shit, this movie is awesome. 
So that was raid 2. Berendal, or I guess it is called. So we'll move on now to a um, extended review when we are going to talk about a little bit more about certain parts of it which I find fascinating and certain other parts that I find a little weird. But uh, nevertheless, I'll see you next time from well so-and-so reviewing such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.